Hi everyone, welcome to Slice of Life. My name is Dabney. I'm the young adult librarian at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use they, them pronouns. Today we're going to be continuing on in the series of manga series you can binge and we're going to be focusing on four shoujo manga titles and these were all selected because they have to do with the supernatural, specifically like Japanese um, folklore and yokai, ayakashi, that sort of thing. So the titles we're going to be talking about today are Kamisama Kiss, The Demon Prince of Momochi House, Inu Expoku SS, and Blackbird. So um, some of these are for teens, some of them are for older teens, and I'll talk about that as um, we get into it. So first up is Kamisama Kiss, and so this is one that I am currently reading. It's brand new to the collection, so um, it hasn't been cataloged yet, but it will be very soon, so keep your eye out for that. This is for teens, um, and it has 25 volumes. So like I said, I haven't finished the series yet, but I'm getting through it. Um, they're very quick reads. So I'm just going to read you um, for each of these the back and then talk to you a little bit about them some more. So Nanami Momozono is alone and homeless after her dad skips town to evade his gambling debts and the debt collectors kick her out of her apartment. So when a man she's just saved from a dog offers her a home, she jumps at the opportunity. But it turns out that his place is a shrine and Nanami has unwittingly taken over his job as a local deity. Nanami has all kinds of new res responsibilities she doesn't understand, dangers she's unaware of, and a cranky ex-familiar who's actually pretty hot. What's a new fledged godling to do? Okay, so this one um, is so funny. I love it a lot. By the way, there is an anime adaptation that we have in the collection you can check out. But um, I think out of all the ones I'm going to talk about today, this one stands out because it is very lighthearted and funny. Um, I, yeah, I, it's probably my, yeah, it is definitely my favorite of the ones I'm going to talk about today just because um, I really love Nanami. Um, you know, she's, I think like 16 years old and she has you know already kind of gone through a lot with like her dad not being like a responsible parent and you know no matter what happens to her she's pretty like plucky and kind of was like all right I'm gonna get through this like I don't know how to get through this but I'm gonna figure it out and um you know suddenly she ends up becoming the new god of this shrine so the new kami which means god and you know she of course knows nothing about this or really anything about this like supernatural world that she's now a part of but you know she is gonna do her best and um so her um familiar as they said um this is tomoe and so he is i think think a nine-tailed fox um so he was like a wild fox ayakashi and the previous um kami of the shrine took him in and made him um oh my gosh I can't remember the Japanese word now um it's not exactly like servant but like he has like these special powers because he like um, is like tied to the shrine and helps like keep it up and all this stuff. So, um, Tomoe has like been on his own for I think 20 years. Like that's when, you know, the previous Kami left and kind of like left him on his own to like look after the shrine. So all of a sudden like Nanami shows up and she's like, yeah, I'm the new Kami. And he's like, uh, no, you're not. I'm not taking orders from you. You're a like, human. Um, this is not your world. You don't belong here. Um, so she kind of has to like prove herself to him 
um, and get him to serve her. I think it's called like a shinshi is um, what the word is for that. I don't know. But anyways, I, I love it. And I love like watching her kind of like confront all these challenges and, um, you know, there's also like these other two who like work at the shrine and like help serve the shrine, um, like other spirits. And she finds out that like, this is a matchmaking shrine. So, um, one of her first tasks as the Kami is to help, um, this Ayakashi who's like, um, a catfish basically spirit um reconnect with this young boy and like go on a date with him I know it might sound weird but it's really it's really cute um, I'm trying to find the cat yeah so Himi Miko of the swamp is a catfish and so she helps her and so each volume is just kind of about Nanami confronting these new challenges and like overcoming them and learning more about her position and kind of very slowly um, building up her own kami powers. So I enjoy it so much. It's it's really cute. It's really fun. Um, highly, highly recommend it. The next one is kind of similar, um, and that is The Demon Prince of Momochi House, and this is also rated for teens, and it has... Um, 16 volumes, so I'm going to read you the summary. On her 16th birthday, orphan Himari Momochi inherits her ancestral estate that she's never seen. Momochi House exists on the barrier between the human and spiritual realms, and Himari is meant to act as guardian between the two worlds. But on the day she moves in, she finds three handsome squatters already living in the house, and one seems to have already taken over her role. Um, so let me show you the character page here. These are our main characters. So um, you've got Himari here. This is Aoi. I hope I'm saying the names right. Um, Yukari, Issei, and then um, this is the new. So a little bit about those characters. Um, so Aoi, when he was like 10, he wandered into Momoshi House and kind of got drafted into being the guardian. Like, you know, what a <laughs> so he's been there for like however many years. Um, I can't remember if he's like 16 or 17, but he's been living in the house acting as a guardian. And as part of that, he can um, take on this other form as the new. So this is what that form looks like. And um, the um, there's like a specific word for that too. Um, I'm going to look it up real quick because I'm like, I know this word. Um, okay, the Omamori-sama. And so, you know, in this form, he has, like, cat ears, bird feathers, and a fox tail. So, um, um, Aoi has been, like, you know, basically dealing with all the stuff that has to, you know, pertain to, like, maintaining this border between, like, the human and spiritual worlds. And he's had help from um, the Shikigami, which are serving spirits, and that's um, Yukari, who is like a water snake. Um, and then Issei, who's like a orangutan. Um, so they've been like serving him and helping him this whole time. And, you know, Himari shows up and she's like, this is my home. Like, what are y'all doing here? And they're all like, um, what are you doing here? You're a human. Like, get out. But they can't tell her, they can't actually get her to leave because she is the true owner of the house. And so she has the ability to make them leave. Um, so, like, they're trying to figure out this balance of, like, what are they going to do? Um, 
and you know she's kind of encountering all of these ayakashi for the first time and eventually you know they work it out that like she stays um in momochi house with them and so um kind of like the storyline is again them sort of dealing with um different challenges that crop up with um you know the different problems that happen with like the ayakashi and the human worlds like not mixing and it's really good um yeah i like it my i think um as far as the manga goes this one um i definitely think the art is my favorite out of all the ones i'm going to talk about it's just like it's very pretty like i love how um the creator draws the characters it's very shoujo you know you've got like flower petals and sparkles and all that happening um you know so um so kami Sama kiss for me wins as far as like overall tone and story and this one wins for the art but i also do really like the story um okay now we're moving into the older teen titles so um first off we have inu x boku ss so i'm gonna read you that summary um real quick um in search of independence and solitude the sharp tongue ririchio shuriken moves to the mansion de ayakashi an apartment building full of wealthy tenants which has its own secret service. Ririchio is eager to be alone, but upon her arrival, she is greeted by Soshi, um, an SS agent arranged for her by her parents. Ririchio tries to turn away, but Soshi's dogged devotion to his new mistress will not be deterred. The threats against the residents of the mansion de Ayakashi are not to be taken lightly after all. And despite his puppy-like demeanor, Soshi is not to be trifled with. Okay, so this one um, has 11 volumes. And it also has um, an anime, which we don't have in the collection. But just so you know, there's an anime. Um, yeah, and as you can see, um, there's already kind of some spicy spicy cover um <laughs> Ririchio tends to wear like a really short skirt and like stockings like the thigh high stockings like that's kind of like her go-to um look uh anyways I kind of like watched a little bit of the first episode um to try and remember like how to pronounce the names which I'm still not very great at but also I just wanted to show you I flipped to this random page and I'm like the height size difference is insane between the two of them like at one point he's like kneeling in front of her and he's like actually her height and I'm like okay um so yeah this one um I remember like when I read the manga I got kind of confused about the story because it is like I think the first four volumes is like a prologue and then it's like things happen and the story shifts and it's like in the future and then it's back into the past and then in the future again and it's yeah I kind of feel like this is one that you know if you did binge read it like straight through that would probably be best because then you wouldn't be like me and I getting all confused because I definitely got confused about it um so again this one I really I like the art a lot um I like all the characters that you meet like in the mansion um and so all the characters basically um who live in the mansion they have had um, their, some of their ancestors were like Ayakashi, so, um, our main character, she, her ancestor, one of her ancestors was an Oni, which is like a demon or a troll or whatever, and so she's like not fully human, but not fully Ayakashi, and she can like sometimes manifest as like, you know, 
an Oni, but she's like a very cute one. It's ridiculous. Um, and then so she, um, so she, her like bodyguard, he is a nine tailed fox. And so, you know, um, these people who are living in the mansion who are kind of like not fully human, not fully Ayakashi, they're like targets for like, um, you know, different Ayakashi come to like attack them. So that's why they have the bodyguards in, um, there's all different reasons for like why, you know, they're choosing to live in this mansion instead of like with their families, um, which is interesting. There's like definitely a lot of drama in this as far as like um, the families and stuff like that. Um, and then another thing I was going to mention is that uh, Ruricio is definitely a sunder, so she is like you know, if you say something to her, she's gonna say something, like, really mean or sarcastic back to you, and then, like, feel guilty and terrible about it later. Like, she's very soft and kind of, I guess, shy and timid on the inside, like, but, you know, she's, like, putting up this very, like, kind of brash front to kind of protect herself. Um, but it's funny, because, like, she, in, she doesn't think she needs a bodyguard, um, but she does, and so she and, um, so she, like, their relationship is just ridiculous. Um, anyway, so it's, yeah, it's definitely, um, I guess I should say all of these that I'm talking about do have, like, um, a romance storyline that's kind of at the heart of it. Um, some of them are, like, you know, I feel like, some of them are more slow burn than others. Um, like, Kamisama Kiss is pretty slow burn. Demon Prince of Momoshi House is... Um, I can't really remember this one. I feel like it's kind of slow burn, maybe. Anyway, and that brings us to our final um, manga, which is Blackbird. So... There is a world of myth and magic that intersects ours, and only a special few can see it. Misao Harada is one such person, and she wants nothing to do with magical realms. She just wants to have a normal high school life and maybe get a boyfriend. All that changes one day when Misao is attacked by a demon. Her child friend Kyo suddenly returns to save her and tends to her cuts with his tongue. Turns out Misao is the bride of prophecy whose blood gives power to the demon clan who claims her. But most demons want to keep her power for themselves by eating her. Now Misao is just trying to stay alive and decide if she likes it when Kyo licks her wounds. Okay. <laughs> uh, as you can tell from the cover, um, definitely on the the spicy side of the shoujo manga. It is rated for older teens. Um, yeah, it definitely has more like, you know, content to it. It's not like really, it's not like explicit because of course it's like rated for teens, but you know, things happen between the characters later on. So that's a little bit of a spoiler. But, um, yeah, I read that one, like, a really long time ago. Um, I don't even know, like, five, six, seven years ago. I can't keep track of time. Um, but, yeah, it's, like, it's definitely more of a romance story than the other ones. Um, and definitely, you know, is focusing on their relationship, um, and there's lots of drama, lots of drama, because obviously, so like the main character, she's been able to see like Ayakashi her entire life, um, and has never really had friends because everyone thinks she's weird because she like, you know, if she sees like an Ayakashi, she's going to like react to it. Um, but anyways, when she turns 16, um, 
she starts getting attacked by Ayakashi because like her power awakens and they can smell her and they're like oh my gosh she smells so good I want to eat her and then um you know as the summary said Kyo comes to her rescue and is able to cure her wounds by licking them they get a lot of use out of that in this story I will just say um, and so yeah um it you know if you like Twilight like a more racy version of Twilight then I think you would probably like this um story so yeah those are it's um it's 18 volumes I don't know if I said that already it's 18 volumes but um mm -mm. it's definitely like the romance factor is up through the roof so yeah these again are my suggestions for shoujo romance with the supernatural specifically Japanese um paranormal stuff again this one is going to be coming to our collection very soon so keep an eye out for it um this is my fave of the stack um second fave <laughs> but yeah i hope you all get a chance to check those out and binge them and maybe check out the anime as well but have a great weekend bye